All right, uh, 3.10, derivatives of inverse trig and general inverse functions. Um, I'm going to give you the following derivatives. Uh, f prime of x here would be 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Uh, cosine very similar. f prime of x is the same thing except negative. And inverse tangent um, is 1 over x squared plus 1. I'm going to post a separate video uh, to accommodate each of those uh, and go through the process on, on how to find them. Um, what I'd like to do over here, uh oh, let's undo that. Oh gosh, come on now. Okay, let's duplicate that. Each of the uh, functions that I'm showing you now on the left have an embedded or composition style function. So the same would apply in each of these, except now the input isn't just x, the input is g of x. So in each of these places, instead of x squared, I would have g of x squared. So let me fill that in. That'd be g of x quantity squared, g of x quantity squared, and uh, down here, g of x quantity squared. Okay, now I am missing one piece, though, because these are composite functions in each case. I then have to also multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay, so that brings about the chain rule when you're doing a composite inverse trig function. Okay, so let's look at the following. The derivative of the inverse sine of x squared. Okay, so I got to do the derivative of inverse sine, which would be 1 over the square root of 1 minus whatever the inside function is squared times the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of x squared is 2x. So in a simplified version, oops, I didn't want that. I wanted 2x times 1 over the square root of 1 minus x to the fourth. That would be our derivative there. Okay, let's do the same thing here. Our inner function is x plus 1 to the 1 half power. Okay, so we'll get to that in a minute when we multiply using the chain rule. Okay, the arc cosine is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus g of x squared. Okay, so I'm going to end up squaring a square root and then multiplying it by this, whatever that is. That would be 1 half power rule, right, x plus 1 to the negative 1 half. So multiply this by 1 half times x plus 1 to the negative 1 half, which would be square root in the denominator. Okay, so let's clean that up. That would be negative 1 over 2 times the square root. Let's see what happens here. Okay, the square and the square root would negate each other. 1 minus x minus 1, so the 1s will cancel. And it looks like I'll get a negative x. I'm going to be multiplying two radicals. So I'm going to multiply negative x and square root of x plus 1. I can actually bring those two inside and do like such and combine them. This would be a sufficient answer. That could be our derivative. You could also, if you wanted to, uh, rewrite this as uh, x squared minus, oops, I'm sorry, negative x squared minus x. That would also work. Either of those two forms would be acceptable for the derivative of the arc cosine. Remember, arc cosine is the same as inverse cosine of square root of x plus 1. Those two would be exactly the same. Okay, so on our next example, we've got uh, the function f defined for x greater than 0. The only reason that's true is because the natural log of x requires it. 
this right here is really just asking us for the derivative of our function at x equals 1. Notice you have an input of 1 here and here. Remember, it's f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, limit of that uh, as h goes to 0. That is the same thing as the derivative at x. Okay, so we know f of x is given here. We know x equals 1. We can do a little simplifying here. So the derivative would require us to do, looks like product rule here. So derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. Okay, and then minus the derivative of arctan of x, which is 1 over x squared plus 1. So let's clean this up. Our derivative would be 2x natural log of x plus this would reduce down to x to the first minus 1 over x squared plus 1. All right, so we want f prime at x equals 1. I plug in a 1. That means I get a 1 in each of these spots where I see an x. Uh, the natural log of 1 is 0, so 2 times 0 is 0. So f prime at 1 would equal 0 plus 1 minus, it looks like, 1 half. So our answer should be b, 1 half. That's the derivative of the slope of the tangent line at x equals 1. Okay, what is the derivative of, an, of the inverse of a function if you only know the function and a point on the graph? Okay, so I'm going to do a general uh, proof here of finding this. Okay, so I'm going to take the derivative of g of x, which is equal to f inverse of x. And then we're going to do some work with that. Okay, I want to rewrite this in terms of x. So I'm going to be taking the derivative with respect to x of... And now, how can I undo this? By doing f of the other side. Right? I'm going to do the inverse operation. And now that's going to require me to use the chain rule. right? The chain rule right here, and the derivative of that will be pretty easy. So the chain rule would tell me that I'd have f prime of g of x times the derivative of the inside will equal 1. I want to figure out what g prime would equal, therefore I'm going to divide. So g prime would be 1 over f prime of g of x, and g of x, we're told at the very beginning, is f inverse of x. And there you go, there you have it. The derivative of g at x is equal to 1 over the derivative of f evaluated at f inverse of x. Whew, that's a lot. Let's see what that actually means. Okay, so f, the derivative of the inverse at 5, that's also asking us what is g prime of 5. Well, earlier up here, we defined g, or g prime as 1 over f prime of f inverse of x. So let's do that. f prime of f inverse of x. Well, let's consult our table, right? What does f inverse of 5 mean here? f inverse of 5, right? f inverse of 5 would be equal to 1. How do I know that? Because f of 1 is equal to 5. If those two are inverses, that property is true. Therefore, f inverse of 5 is equal to 1. So this is equal to 1 over the derivative at x equals 1. Okay, what is the derivative when x equals 1? It's 3 halves. So this is 1 over 3 halves, which is 2 thirds. So the derivative of the inverse at x equals 5 is equal to 2 thirds. Let's try another one. Okay, this is going to be equal to g prime at 2, which is 1 over f prime of f inverse of 2. Well, f inverse of 2 would be equal to negative 1. 
Therefore, 1 over f prime of negative 1 is the same as 1 over 1 half, which is 2. So the derivative of the inverse at x equals 2 is positive 2. The reciprocal, what you'll notice is it's the reciprocal of whatever the derivative of the original was. Right, look at that. It was 3 halves for the original, therefore it's 2 thirds for the inverse. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. Uh, this would be the same as g prime of 1. Uh, now we have a problem here. We have a problem because I don't see a y or an output that's equal to 1. Therefore, we don't have enough information. Not enough. That's an i. Information. Well done. All right. Okay, so let's look at the, this right here. This is a 2007 FRQ. I'm supposing non-calculator. Um, we're given a bunch of information about f, f prime, g, and g prime. Uh, the functions f and g are differentiable for all real numbers, and g is strictly increasing. The table above gives values of the functions and their first derivatives at selected values of x. The function h is defined by the following, f of g of x minus 6. Explain why there must be a value r. Ooh, this is just screaming, screaming the intermediate value theorem at me, okay? Uh, there must be a value r between 1 and 3 such that h of r equals negative 5. So I want to find out what h of 1 and h of 3 are. So that's going to be f of g of 1 minus 6. This will be f of g of 3 minus 6. Okay, f, uh, let's see, g of 1. g of 1 is 2. Uh, g of 3, so g of 1 is 2, g of 3 is 4. Okay. F of 2 is 9, and 9 minus 6 is 3, okay? F of 4, F of 4, oops, F of 4, which is negative 1, negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. Okay, here's the most important part. Therefore, since... H of 3 and H of 1, right? Oops, that's H of 1. Since H of 3 is less than negative 5, which is less than H of 1, then by the intermediate value theorem, there must exist some R such that r is between such that h of r equals negative 5. Now we don't know what r is, but we do know that since this is differentiable, all right, since it's differentiable, that means it's continuous. That means that if h of 3 is, what, negative 7, and h of 1 is 3, that somewhere in between there, h of r must be negative 5. Okay, for part d, if g inverse is the inverse function of g, write an equation for the line tangent to the graph at x equals 2. Okay, so to write the equation, we're going to need a couple values. We're going to need the slope. Right, and we're going to need that x and y value. Now, we know x. x is 2. Okay? And we also know the slope that we're looking for here is g of negative 1 evaluated at 2. We want that derivative. Right? We want the derivative where the inverse equals, the x value of the inverse equals 2. So first things first, let's look at g. Okay, so uh, g inverse, right, if x equals 2 there, then for g, 
x would be, or 2 would be our y value. So let's look up here at g. g evaluated at 2, excuse me, um, the x value for g prime, right, if this were g prime, all that we would do, right, is we would flip-flop these two values, 1 and 2. So if x was 2, then y would have to be 1. Okay, so if x were 2, y would have to be 1. So that would mean in g, x would have to be 1 if y is equal to 2. Okay, therefore, let's take a look real quick at the general equation of finding the derivative the derivative of g inverse of x. And we just did this. Right? The slope would be 1 over g of g, excuse me, g prime of g inverse of x, which in this case we know is 2 for x. Okay, so we would have 1 over g prime of looks like g inverse of 2. Well, g inverse of 2 is 1. That's our output. So we want g prime at 1. g prime at 1 from our table, g prime at 1 is 5. Therefore, our slope of our inverse at x equals 2 would be 1 fifth. So we know our slope is 1 fifth, and we know our point. Okay, we want our point from our inverse to follow that, and therefore that's the equation of our tangent line. Okay, uh, on to example six. Example six is a calculator example, so we can only go so far with, um, you know, with pen and paper, and then we'll use the calculator to find the rest. Um, F prime of x, I want to know where that is equal to g prime of x. So what I'd do is I'd probably just plug this into my calculator after I find these. Um, this is really x to the negative 2, so its derivative would be negative 2 over x to the third. Or, if you wanted to, you could leave it like such. All right, either one is fine. The derivative of arctangent of x is the same as the derivative of the inverse tangent of x, which is 1 over x squared. And if you take your calculator out and you plug this in for y1, and you plug this in for y2, and you used your intersect capabilities on your calculator, uh, I believe you'd see that your answer would be C. Okay, uh, functions, derivatives, uh, composite functions, and their derivatives. Uh, this is a table we'll probably fill out in class. Um, I'll fill out a few of them right now, and then uh, you can check it out and go from there. All right, so from memory, I did those. I, I think I got them all right. Uh, you can check back in your notes. All of uh, the following here um, on the right side would be what you see in the left column's derivative times, uh, using chain rule, just times then f prime of x all the way down. Let me just check to see. Yeah, that would be, uh, well, yeah, it'd be consistent, relatively consistent, other than, um, you know, instead of x in each of these spots, you'd have an f of x, right? So it'd be like, for example, uh, let's take one that's kind of obscure. How about, uh, yeah, let's go with log base b of x, right? So this would actually be 1 over f of x ln of b times f prime of x, right? So everywhere you see an x in the left column, you'd have an f of x in the right column, and then you'd have to chain rule and multiply by the derivative of f of x. All right, that is uh, 3.10. Uh, what is that on? Inverse trig derivatives and the inverse general derivative. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.